Don't remember to. Morning, Ella. Morning, Ella. Morning. 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 You're looking well, Ella. You're looking really well, Ella. Thank you. Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> the dog always had a picture. Hi, Kevin. Morning, Kevin. Good morning. This is strange, but actually together. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Just about to switch. People off, and we have a, a welcome screen, which uh, is just the usual one. If you care to read it, anyone new? We're all on. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our joint Sunday service once again by Zoom. A special welcome to any visitors uh, who are watching with us. And today we welcome our Associated Minister Tim, who's leading the service, as Mark is having a well deserved day off. As lockdown is eased, you may have noticed that churches could be open for worship, private prayer, funerals, and weddings with strict safety precautions including the wearing of face masks and no singing. Consequently, both churches have decided to continue with Zoom service services at the moment. That's all from me. I'll pass across to Tim. Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yeah. This morning we're going to be looking at uh, 
the kingdom again, following some of Jesus' parables in Matthew 13, and we'll be looking at that a little bit later. To start with this morning, uh, I'm going to ask you to listen to and watch a YouTube uh, recording of a Taze chant. Now, for those of you who don't know about Taze, Taze is a uh, Taze that's spelt T A I Z E, is a place in France that it's a monastic community that was founded at the end of the Second World War by Brother Roger, and they developed a particular style of uh, singing, chanting, and singing. And um, this is a recording of their chant, Vene Sanctus Spiritus, which is Come Holy Spirit. And the Taze style is very much a repetitive chant that you can repeat at home once you pick up the tune of the uh, sopranos or the basses, you can follow it. And then on the top of that, you get a cantor singing a top line every so often. The thing about this recording is it's a virtual choir uh, recorded during lockdown from around the world so you'll see that the individual singers are from uh, all sorts of countries all around the world and some of them will be singing in their own languages some of them sing in English as well the recording is six minutes long so take your time let the recording help you come into worship and you're invoking the Holy Spirit to come to be with us this morning and to guide us into our worship. So uh, if you can start the recording, please, Max. We're not hearing it yet, Max. Nor seeing it come to that. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can yes. hear you. But... Yeah, do you want to, should we just leave it and we'll move on and if we can play it later, play it later. Hey. Don't, don't worry, it's, it's um, we, can, we can carry on. Fine. Sorry about that. That's okay, Max, no, no, no problem. There be, might be a delay to you. Okay, so we'll leave the recording and we'll see if we can come back to it uh, later. Um, it'd be well worth listening to if we can. So um, I'll start with a, an opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, bless our time together this morning. Open our hearts and minds to your truth. Guide us by your spirit and lead us deeper into your call on our lives as disciples 
and as Christian communities in Dunska and Moniaive. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to move on now to our hymn, first hymn, number 279, Make Way, Make Way for Christ the King. But I have to do my stuff. Just keep it simple. Can you see that, Sam? Just go for it. Yes, I can.
Well, we finally got there and uh, hopefully you got the message. Uh, I wanted us to, as a way of thinking about the, the parables and the kingdom this morning, of you to think about um, one item that is of great monetary value that you own or possess, and then one item which is uh, of emotional or sentimental value. It may not be of great monetary value, but it's of great value to, to you um, uh, as a person. So uh, I suppose for many of us, um, items of great monetary value will probably be um, our house or a car or something like that, which is... Um, one of the significant purchases we might make in our lives. Um, and uh, if you, some of you own an estate or an island or something like that, then you might, uh, you might say that. But for most of us, it's uh, perhaps a little bit smaller in scale. Uh, so uh, really, I want us to think about the item of great uh, emotional or sentimental value to you. And um, if possible, uh, would someone like to, if you've got one in front of you, wave it at us um, and uh, I can perhaps go to you and uh, we can see what that item is. Ah, I can see Ali's waving something there. Can, can you unmute, unmute yourself, um, Ali, and uh, say what it is? This is a 3D sculpture of my grandchildren which was done by my son on his 3d printer wow so what's the material what's it made of it's made of plastic and then it's filled with plaster of paris wow and that's a 3d printer yeah. yes that's right Gosh. you you scan the person and then th then you print it yes so you can have that in the room with you all the time. Yes, that's right. Brilliant, thanks very much, Ali, that's great. Any others that anybody would like to uh, wave? June's pointing at her um, wedding finger. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yes, I think uh, Pam is, yeah. Sam, what have you got there? Does that, can you unmute yourself and tell us? Morning. It um, belonged to my nan, um, and it's her gold um, locket. And inside is a picture of my granddad um, and my mum and her sister. But you'd need a knife to open it. It's very delicate. But it was something that I always looked. She always wore it, um, and it was always something that I had loved. And so um, when she passed, she left it to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I've still got the original box that it came in as well, so it means a lot to me. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. She wasn't trying to hypnotise you. I wasn't. <laughs> 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 okay, thanks. John, you're holding up something there. Yeah. It's the journal of my great great grandfather who sailed around, around the world. Ah. Which is absolutely fascinating. Yes. What year, what, what year would that be? It was 1845. So he was actually sailing, yes. Yeah, he was in a, um, a sailing ship and it took them two months to get around the Cape Horn. Wow, yeah, gosh. So it's uh, a link with the past there, gosh. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, John. Anybody else like to um, contribute? I can't see. Malcolm, what have you got there? And then we'll go to... Um... What have you got, Malcolm? You've gone... Around gone... the, uh, around the uh, South of Africa, it went to the Gulf War when we were in the Gulf with me as a, uh, a royal, when I was a Royal Navy chaplain. It's got loads and loads of notes inside it. Um, in fact, I had to buy another one because I couldn't squash in any more notes. And um, so it's a very precious thing to me. 
What, what a, was it? I missed the first bit. Is it the, is it the Bible? Yes, it's the Bible. Yes, so it's the one it's with you. my own particular it's version of the right. Bible, which has travelled around the world. world. With you in the Navy. Brilliant. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Malcolm. And I think, Helen, you were waving something there, weren't you? Um, it's oh, just yeah. a piece of Inuit sculpture. Oh. oh. Yes, it's, yeah, we can hear you. Can you, you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it represents two Sedners who were half female, half fish. And it's very, very important part of the Inuit um, tradition. It was made by an Inuit sculptor that we got to know when we lived in Canada. Wow. And it's really a very, very precious piece of sculpture. Yeah. Is, that, is it made out of wood? It's made out of a walrus tusk. Oh, right. Okay, yes. Very, but, very finely carved. Yes. Yeah, marvellous. Thank you. And perhaps we'll take one more if there's anybody keen to tell us. Scott, was it... Uh, no, Amber, that's right, Amber, down the bottom there, yes, of my screen. This, this is a, the last thing that my mum and I made together. Um, she's always been fond of elephants, and she taught me to knit, and she helped me stuff it while she was in the Alexander unit, so this has become very precious to me, yeah. her memories and just the connection that we made. Yeah. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. I, th I think we'll move on, but um, it's just an example of some of the things that we can hold precious to us, and perhaps they're the things that we might grab in a hurry if the house was on fire and we had to leave quickly, uh, you know, and you had to grab one or two things very quickly. Those are the sort of things you would grab. So thank you all for your contributions and for thinking about that. Um, we're going to uh, move on now to our next hymn, which is uh, Hail to the Lord's Anointed, hymn 474 in the book. We're hoping that Max is going to run this one. Is it still proving a problem, Max? Can't hear you, Max. Right. Can you hear me? Yes, no. I can hear you. I'm, get, I'm getting a message saying host disabled participant sh screen sharing. You probably have come in and I haven't been redone hang on you should be okay again now hopefully all right we should try again Sharing. Not seeing it. No. Shall I have another go? Not seeing. No, I think you'll never have another go. Okay, I'll take over. All right, do that.
Shall we pray? Lord God, thank you for the treasure that we have of being able to meet together from the comfort and from the safety of our own homes. We are immensely grateful for our homes, for fresh water and plentiful varied food. We are mindful, God, of our brothers and sisters throughout the world who live in conflict zones, for refugees and for homeless folk. Help us to realise that our ability to social distance is a privilege that many don't have. Thank you for the skills of our medical teams who are still dealing with very ill people and be with those who are now waiting for treatments which have been put on hold. Lord, give us patience, kindness and consideration to count our blessings rather than focusing on any misfortunes. Help us to be grateful for those who work in our service industries, providing us with clean water, with fuel, with food. Be with our politicians and policy makers. Thank you for the people who make our clothes, often on pitiful wages. Thank you for those who empty our buckets, for our spiritual leaders, and for those around us who provide us with, a, with company and a sympathetic ear. We thank you, Father, that those who have been shielding for many weeks have a bit more freedom now, but we still remember the many folk who are not able to see family in person, who live too far away to be able to meet up. We're so grateful for the technology and those that can make it work that allows, allows us to see and to speak to our families. Lord, we ask you to be with Mark and Debbie as they move into the Mass this week, and we know that you hold us all in your hands. And now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be, be done, done in heaven as on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from Matthew 13, reading from verse 44. The parables of the hidden treasure and the peril. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The parable of the net. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. The angels will come and separate them. The angels will come and separate the, vic the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word and to his name be all praise and glory. Amen.
Well, thank you, uh, Margaret, for that reading, and thank you to Kath for those prayers. Uh, we're thinking about uh, the kingdom of God this morning from uh, Jesus uh, telling of those parables in Matthew 13. And in the Bible, wisdom is described as a, a characteristic of God. It's very often feminine and unlike worldly wisdom, which is based on intuition and experience, spiritual wisdom is God-given and brings revelation about the purposes of God. Now, there once was a, a new Christian who was nervous about her first communion after confirmation. She found alcohol difficult because it went straight to her head and she was afraid the wine would make her tipsy. After the service, she told her minister that her fears had been unfounded. What happened, the minister asked. She replied, it went straight to my heart. And so twin themes of wisdom and the heart. What God, what God wants is our hearts. And that is where the kingdom of God lies, which brings wisdom about what really matters in our daily lives. So this theme of wisdom is contained in the parable by Jesus of the pearl uh, in our reading. And the pearl is worth much more than any other, and the merchant desires it above all to buy. So the reading from Matthew is this series of parables about the kingdom, and in the first, this person stumbles on hidden treasure. Here the kingdom is not obvious, but its value is such that anyone who discovers it will exchange everything to possess it. In the second, uh, the person is searching for pearls, and finds the pearl of great price. And so the kingdom is discovered in different ways, in one case by chance, and in the other by searching for it. But however it is found, it is worth sacrificing everything else for its sake. So two points I want to make here. One is the demand of, that the gospel places on us, God's grace is freely given to us. There's nothing we can do to earn salvation, but God's grace does require a response from us. And the question is, what is our response to God's love for us in Christ? The second point is that joy, not duty, drives us to take action. People do not sell everything to buy the treasure because they ought to do so but because their hearts demand it. It is when our hearts are converted that change and transformation happen and the kingdom breaks in. God wants our hearts and everything else follows. The parable of the net, like that of the tares, reminds us that in the community of God's people, there is a mixture of people. For some in Matthew's community, it would have served as a warning Perhaps they were rejected. Perhaps they will be rejected when the final judgment came, is a question they might be asking themselves. For other, it would have, others, it would have offered encouragement. The church is not a perfect community. It could all be safely left in God's hands. And, and later in the verses at verse 51, we see that this, the disciples claim to understand Jesus' teaching. But hearing the parables is not enough. It's necessary to take them to heart. Scribes taught the law. Those who become disciples have both riches from the past, what is old, and the present, what is new. We have a great tradition in the church of 2,000 years of church life and witness to Christ. But that is not enough. What is God doing now in your life? in our lives, in the life of the church. Most of the church's work gets done in inauspicious circumstances. We may occasionally break into the headlines, but the real work is done on the ground in places like Dunsker and Monyive. And our mission can sometimes seem overwhelming and our resources too few. But Jesus promises that God's power makes everything possible. So to finish with, I'd like to read a description of the kingdom of God written by a man called um, 
Frederick Beekner. It's a theological book I, I picked up um, in theological college and has uh, have with me ever since. And he's got a, a very quirky way of describing things. And this is what he says about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not a place, of course, but a condition. Kingship might be a better word. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Jesus prayed. The two are in apposition. Insofar as here and there, and now and then, God's kingly will is being done in various odd ways among us, even at this moment. The kingdom has already come. Insofar as all the odd ways we do, his will at this moment are at best half-baked and half-hearted. The kingdom is still a long way off, a hell of a long way off, to be more, more precise and theological. As a poet, Jesus is maybe at his best in describing the feeling you get when you glimpse the thing itself, the kingship of the king, official at last, and all the world his coronation. It's like finding a million pounds in a field, he says, or a jewel worth a king's ransom. It's like finding something you hated to lose and thought you'd never find again, an old keepsake, a stray sheep, a lost child. When the kingdom really comes, it's as if the thing you lost and thought you'd never find again is you. Amen. Well, we're going to come now to our final hymn, which is uh, 320 in the hymn book, Joy to the World. <laughs> Can you do this, Max?
Are you still there, Max? We're not hearing this. No. Do you want to? It's not coming. It's not coming across, is it? Shall I just say a blessing instead? <laughs> it hasn't worked. So. Uh, uh, Thank you, Max, for putting in the effort, but it, it seems the broadband's not letting us uh, work those YouTube recordings this morning. So I'll just say a prayer to finish with and, that, and then a blessing at the end. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you guide us by your spirit day by day. Lead us and take us to live by the values of your kingdom. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. So if you um, if you want to have a look, what I, what I was hoping was going to happen this morning was that we were going to pray, play the YouTube recording of the um, uh, virtual Taze Choir ve uh, singing Veni Sanct Veni Sancte Spiritus. So if you want to go onto YouTube, look that up. So it's a virtual Taze Choir Veni Sancte Spiritus. And at the end, I was hoping that we were going to get the blessing. You remember the. <laughs> can you hear me yeah yes, no, yes. <laughs> no, you can hear me now right so sorry about that we were intending to play those two youtube recordings the one was of the taze virtual choir so you can look that up on youtube they're singing Bailey sanctis oh, taze virtual choir and at the end we were hoping to uh play a blessing a youtube blessing you remember the the UK blessing that was done by a virtual choir. Well, the, there's an African choir called the Destiny Choir who've done it as well. So look up on YouTube, African Destiny Choir singing the blessing, and you'll see that as well. They're, they're good fun. I'll, I'll post them on the Dunsker Facebook page and also around the Dunsker email list. So maybe that can go around the um, Money Eye version as well. It just shows you need a professional at the helm, so hopefully Mark's back with us making things work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Very much, lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Thank you all for trying very hard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely.